Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together. Today we're going to be tackling the broadcast message event, something that is relatively new in Game Maker Studio, but has an incredible amount of power and is probably being underused by most of the community using Game Maker Studio. So first off, what is the broadcast message event? Well, Game Maker Manual breaks it down for us really well. It is an event that you can call on your objects to listen for messages being sent out by sequences and by sprites. Now, it also is used in the gesture events, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. Once you understand how to use it here, you'll know how to use it in the gesture events as well. So essentially, a sequence and a sprite, if you add a broadcast message, it will send that out for every object that has the broadcast message event. And then you can look to see which kind it is and if it's the specific message you want, and then you can do something based on that information. So this is a really powerful way to have code run at a specific time in your objects based on a sequence or where the sprite is at. Now the sprite I'm gonna be using today is the knight from the medieval fantasy character pack you can find on itch.io and it is by OCO, however that is. I'll put a link to this in there uh, in the comments below so if you wanna check this out and support them. So let's go ahead and check out what I've got here. I have a project with just an object I've created, nothing in there and the sprite that I've brought in, and it is a death sprite. So the goal of what we're gonna do is create a broadcast message inside of both this sprite and a sequence that we create, and then have this object pick it up and run some code based on that broadcast message. So the first thing we're gonna need is that broadcast message event, which you can find under other, and inside of broadcast message, here it is. So I'm gonna delete everything inside of here. Now the manual does have an example of how to do this. So I'm actually gonna just grab this code and then throw it inside of here. And so let's break down this code really quick. We have an if statement checking the event data. Now event data is a built-in global variable that you can access pretty much from anywhere, but it's only gonna be useful inside of the broadcast message. And it comes in as a DS map, which is a data structure map, essentially a 2D array. And this question mark is a direct accessor to the key event type. That's all this is. It looks a little weird if you haven't used accessors before, but all we're doing is getting the key, the value for the key event type, and we're just accessing it directly right here. And if it is equal to sequence event, then it checks to see the message type. And then we have a switch statement here, which goes through case by case of what it could be. So let's do the sequence first, and then we'll do the sprite. So I'm gonna make a new sequence. I'm not even gonna bother naming it. And I'm just gonna drag our sprite inside of here and zoom in because it's a pretty small sprite. Now, this actually plays for 89 or 90-ish frames. Uh, if we go through, if I go all the way to 90, it actually restarts, so I cut it off here. So if we play this, it's just playing the death animation and then it stops right there. Perfect. What I wanna do is at the very end of this animation is I wanna run some code. And I'm gonna do that with the broadcast event by adding a broadcast message. And I'm just gonna say this is called death. And if I put this right here at the end, I now have a broadcast message. So at this frame in the sequence, it will look for any objects listening for the broadcast message and it knows that if it has the broadcast message event. So if no objects have it, it's not gonna work. It won't do anything because you don't have any objects listening for it. And inside here, if you don't have this code that's specifically checking to see if it's the kind of event and message you want, it also won't do anything. So there's a lot of setup to have it work exactly as you would expect, but once you get that in, you can use this in every sequence you have in your game and it's very powerful. So we have a broadcast message called death that is triggering at the end of the sequence. Now we're gonna switch this case of hit to 
death. And you got to make sure it is capitalized and spelled the same because it's looking for that string specifically. It is not a number. It is not just an ID. It is actually a string it's checking for. And once we do this, then we can put in whatever code we want. I don't have this audio file, but you can imagine you might want to do something such as reset your game. So put your player back to where they were, change their sprite, update the score, do all of these things. So I am just going to say game restart. And this is just going to reset everything just to show you that this is actually happening. Now, the last thing we have to actually do before this works is go into our room and put in the object that it's listening for. If you don't put in an object in the game, well, it's not going to work. So we've got the object here and then I'm going to make an asset layer and bring in our sequence that we've got right here. Now this is super small, so I'm going to go ahead and make a camera. I'm going to do 340. I'm going to change the width to 320 by 240. And then I'm just going to have it follow. Well, we don't actually have any. I guess I'll put it on this object listener. This would be the quickest way to do it. And I'll put the listener right there. This way we can actually see a little bit easier the sprite playing. There we go. It dies and it triggers that game restart. So let's actually take a look at the code of what's being brought inside of here and how it's working so that we can understand it a little better. Now, if you enjoy this kind of thing, check out my website, letslearnthistogether.com for some more advanced courses and a new book that I just launched, Becoming a Game Developer in Just 30 Days. If you don't know where to start, that is the perfect place. Now here we have our object. So we're triggering right here. We have event data. So now to view the event data, remember it's a global variable. So we'll go over to variables, but it's also a built in piece of data. So it's not going to show up in the globals because that's our variables. So instead we can actually go to watch and type in event data, and then we can click view as and change it from real to DS map. And then this is going to allow us to see everything inside of the event data. So we have an event type, which is what we're looking at right here. And it says sequence event. And this is in quotes, which means it's a string. The message is death. And then we also have an element ID. You can use this element ID to check which sequence or which uh, broadcast message this is coming from or where it's coming from so that you know which one it's on. Because there are times you'll play several sequences and sometimes the same sequence multiple times. In my card game, I had an event broadcast message just like this, and it was triggering the damage that was being dealt. But when I had two cards that attack, it triggered that sequence twice. So I had to find a way to make it so that it only triggered one time, even when multiple cards attacked. And you can do that with an element ID or by adding in another check here that you only trigger once. So this is our DS map and that's how we look at it. And that's how you run this code inside of here. Now, I also talked about doing it inside of sprites and you can because right here is a broadcast message. So if we come over here and this time we add another one, let's put dying this time and we'll come up here. And this time it's not a sequence event, but I actually don't know what the name of it's going to be. So instead, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this death event. So I'm gonna come over here, click the trash icon. So that's now gone. And now what I wanna do is actually listen for this. So I'm gonna go back into our room and I'm gonna delete the asset, the sequence, and just bring in our sprite. And I'll put it like right here. And I think that should be closer to the middle of the actual camera. So now when we just run this, it's our sprite and our sprite is set to a loop. So it's going to keep going. Kind of looks like it did before with the sequence, but the sequence isn't in here. It's not actually running that code, but the broadcast message is still being sent out. So I'm going to run this in debug mode and boom, here it is. Now I want to see what this actually is. So I'm going to change the event data to DS map. And now this time the event type is sprite event. That's what I needed to know. I figured it was something like that, but I also didn't know the exact wording on it. And if you don't know, 
find out. So now I'm gonna come down here and say else if event data, open this up. We're still looking for the event type first, but this time we're looking for sprite event. And so if it's this, then we're gonna do a switch on event data, the message inside of it. This part stays exactly the same because we're actually looking at the message and the case that we're looking for is dying. So we'll put this in here and this time we'll do a show message. And we'll just say I'm dead. And now when we run this, it's going to pick up this event and it says I'm dead. So you can imagine here that you can put in any code you want, you can run your own functions, you can create a new object, end the sequence, change the sprite, do anything you want at any time during any of your sprites and any of your sequences playing, which is really, really powerful. So you could easily use this instead of the animation end event and it would give you even more control because you could, in theory, put a broadcast message wherever you want inside of here. So one thing you could do is if you had an attack combo and you had a broadcast message, you could put it right where you want in the attack combo. And if the player is pressing the right key at that event, then they can continue with that combo. Here, maybe there's a chance to actually like heal for one if they press the right key before the player is all the way down and dead. The options are limitless, but that gives you the tools to be able to use the broadcast message event, and now you know how to use it. So this is for sequence, sprite, and you also use it for gestures, and now you know how to figure out exactly which kind of event that is, and anything else you need to do, because you can actually go in and view event data in the debugger, and see what you need to see. So hopefully that was helpful and you enjoyed it. If you want to see anything else from me, leave a comment below. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to hit me up. Thank you very much for joining me. And as I like to say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as one dollar a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.